Can you do a hair transplant on Afro-textured hair? Thank you for your question. You submitted your question without a photo. And you're asking, can you do a hair transplant with Afro-textured hair? Well, I can certainly share with you perspectives as a transplant doctor, as well as someone who's also managed hair loss for many years. A little bit of background, I'm a board-certified cosmetic surgeon and fellowship-trained oculofacial plastic and reconstructive surgeon. I've been in practice in Manhattan and Long Island for over 20 years. I'm also the founder of Tricostem Hair Regeneration Centers, a system we developed uh, over the past seven to eight years that was derived from work we did on hair transplant. And we've been treating patients from around the world, both men and women, uh, with progressive genetic pattern hair loss. And we've treated a lot of people, a wide variety of people, with all kinds of different hair, hair te textures and styles uh, consistent with different ethnic backgrounds. So I think that one of the things that is important to understand is when in the current knowledge uh, and awareness that people have about hair loss, a lot of times people will consider hair transplant as the first line of treatment when they experience a certain degree and threshold of hair loss. Now, at, at, up to a point, I think that is, that is reasonable. But I would say that from my experience with patients um, with hair loss, that when we were doing a lot of a hair transplant, and this is going over many years, we were trying to get better results. We wanted to get the transplanted hairs to grow better and to grow would have a lower rate of loss because not every transplanted hair survives. We wanted to get a better healing of the donor area. So we used a material called acellular matrix and platelet-rich plasma. Well, approximately a year later, we noticed that a lot of patients, the thinning hair also got thicker, and these were areas that were not transplanted. So we eventually worked on and developed a system and a process to help people with thinning hair. And it's a non-surgical, what has become a significant alternative to hair transplant. Now, hair transplant is still a very important and valid strategy. But I would, I would explain to my patients who come for consultation that if you are considering a transplant, it is very important to find a strategy to slow down your progression and maximize coverage. And why is that? Because hair transplant is not a cure for hair loss. There is no cure for hair loss. It's all about managing areas where there is a desire to have more hair. Now, when it comes to African textured hair, it is basically hair that is very curly and very coarse. There is a huge advantage in getting coverage. So whether I've done a transplant in a patient with, with African type hair, the donor area can have a limited um, density, which is the nature of, uh, of typical African hair. Um, you can still get a lot of coverage and because of the nature of the waviness, curliness, and thickness. Now, by the same token, we have taken patients who have had genetic pattern hair loss, and this is both men and women. We've had patients who have had um, loss from traction alopecia or from use of braids. We've had patients who have had chemical um, uh, injury to the scalp from hair relaxers and we used this treatment called hair regeneration. What I have found has been ver very gratifying is that thanks to that particular characteristic of the curliness and coarseness of the hair, a little bit goes a long way. Now with hair regeneration, we're able to reactivate hair that isn't growing, we're able to thicken thinning hair, and we're able to prolong the life cycle of a thinning hair. So, when you think about it, especially for women, 
we've been able to make a significant impact without doing surgery. Now, this, when it comes to male pattern hair loss, depending on the degree of that person's hair loss progression, we can still apply the principles of hair regeneration to maximize coverage. And what I explain to our patients is, even if you move forward to doing a transplant and you want to do a transplant, every hair that is grown, reactivated, and is present is a hair that doesn't have to be transplanted. So hair loss is more, in, in, from my perspective and my, in my experience, hair loss unfortunately is still progressive. And what you want to do is you want to manage the hair loss in a way that is optimal and strategic. So before doing a hair transplant, I would say explore pharmaceutical and regenerative medical technologies such as hair regeneration. But to answer, of course, the question of can you do a transplant with patients with African hair, the answer is yes. There are certainly different challenges with doing that kind of transplant, but that's more of a technical issue than it is a feasibility issue. It is doable, but it's very important to understand, and it is not always represented as clearly with this aggressive marketing, that hair transplant is not a cure. It allows for improved coverage in areas where there is lack of hair. But you still want to figure out a way to maximize coverage for as long as possible. And even as a surgeon who does, who has done transplants for so long, our, the majority of our practice with hair loss is management, which means pharmaceutical and hair regeneration. And so we've actually been able to help a lot of patients delay transplantation so that they can get improved coverage. And arguably, many of our patients experience not only improvement with the treatment, but they can actually get the re results of coverage that exceed not just one, but two hair transplants. And the technical reasons for that are essentially have to do with the limitations in being able to transplant effectively to achieve a certain critical density, as well as the collateral loss of hairs from the action of doing, from the trauma of transplantation. And not to mention the actual variability and survivability of the hair grafts. So certainly there are a lot of variables and there is no perfect solution, but there, are, there is an optimal management strategy that I think is worth learning about before you move forward with any surgery. So I hope that was helpful. I wish you the best of luck. Thank you for your question. Thank you.